Hello everyone. In this new video, we will cover different workflow tips for using the Godot editor for making Battlefield 6 maps. So let's start. The first tip is that you can maximize your viewport by clicking this corner button. This option hides the side panels and adds more space, making level editing easier. The next tip is that you can split the editor viewport. Go to the view menu and here you can find different editor layout combinations. To reset the scale, rotation or position of any object back to its original values, you can click the small arrow circle next to it. It will reset that property. You can also right click and check favorite property. This will pin it on the top of the menu making it always visible for all objects so you can edit it quickly. To remove it, just right click and select unfavorite. Go in the perspective menu and here you can find more editor views. You have the top view, side view, back view, shortcut keys are shown next to them. There is a wireframe view which shows how dense the models are. There is an overdraw view as well which is like an x-ray view of your map. You can also lock view rotation which will fix the view in one position and disable any viewport rotation. For lighting, you can disable all lights from here. If you turn on the world environment, it adds more lighting in the scene. In the world environment, there is a setting called AO which is short for ambient occlusion. You will find it under post process. It adds small shadow details between the models. You can see there is a little bit of shadow effect added and it helps improve visibility in the scenes. Here you can also increase sky energy, rotate the sun direction if you want to explore different lighting conditions. Keep in mind this is only for the editor and will not change in the game. And in case you are viewing your map from a far away distance, the shadows may disappear. For that increase the shadow max distance value to like 100 or 300 so your shadows remain visible. You can lock any object by pressing Ctrl L or clicking the lock icon on the top menu. This will make the object unselectable. For instance, if you want the floor to be locked and not getting selected while making changes, you can press the lock icon or Ctrl L. A lock icon will be visible in the object layer. When you want to unlock something, just click the lock icon again or Ctrl L to remove it. If you want to select multiple objects, you can draw a box selection. Press escape to deselect the selection. Another useful tip is using freeform snapping. Press shift G and you can move any object freely and place it even on top of other models as well. This only works if the object has a collider on it. For example, if I move the tank on the train, it will float in the air but will snap to the floor. The reason is that the floor has a collider and the terrain does not have any collider. We will add that in the next step. To add a collider to a terrain, right click on it and select editable children. This will expose the mesh node in it. Right click again and select editable children. We will have the terrain object visible. Go to the mesh menu, create collision shape, select static body child and click to create it. It takes a few seconds and a collider is generated matching the terrain shape. Now if you want to place anything on the terrain, it will easily snap to it. We will press shift G. 
and you can see our object will move and position correctly. This is useful when you want to place items, buildings on the terrain rather than on a flat floor. Make sure once you are done placing the objects and have finalized the level, delete the static body so that the collider is no longer added into the exported map. Otherwise the map file size may increase and can give errors. Also uncheck editable children property which will bring the terrain back to its default state. Moving on to the next tip, if you want to view any model independently, you can click the small white box next to it in the hierarchy. This will open the model in a new window. We will be able to change textures, materials and other settings when that option will be available later hopefully. If you want to search anything in the project, press Ctrl P. This will open a window where you can search for anything and view it. To open the object library which is at the bottom, press Ctrl J to open or close it. If you want to maximize the library window, then press Shift F12. To enable freeform look in the editor, press Shift F and if you press WASD, you can move in the scene. The other way is holding the right mouse button. Use the mouse scroll wheel to increase or decrease the movement speed. To focus on a certain object, press F and use the mouse scroll to zoom on to it. You can also click the small circle next to each object to shift focus to it quickly. You can also customize the Godot editor layout. Click the small button and you will find the dock position. This allows you to change the position of the windows on both sides. Go to Editor Layout to save your layout or revert back to the default one. On the top menu bar, there is a script option which shows the script file attached to any object. You can also click the blue button next to it in the hierarchy to view the scripts. Sometimes this is useful in case you want to assign custom scripts inside the editor. To keep things organized in your level, you can add empty nodes and place items in them. For example, press Ctrl A and add a 3D node. Here I want to place all vehicles in this node. I will select the vehicle objects and drag them inside it which makes it like a group. You can do this for buildings, walls, sounds, mountains or anything else. The next tip is about snapping. Let's say you want to join these two floors with each other. If you place your items using the snap option, then objects can connect with each other. However, the default snapping option may not always work. What we can do here is use the Godot asset library and enable an add-on from it. So go to asset library and here you have a lot of tools available. Not all of them are compatible with the current SDK. We will search for snappy add-on. Click to download and install it. Once you have installed this add-on, go to your project settings and here you will find plugins. Enable snappy. Now to test it. You can click any object and press the V key. A small yellow point will be visible at the corners of the model and this allows you to quickly and precisely snap one object with another which otherwise would not be possible or may take a lot of time.
I hope you find this video useful in some way and help you work better in Godot while making maps for Battlefield 6. If you like to see more then please leave a comment or suggestion, give this video a like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the battlefield.